So the second reaction to glycolysis is moderated by the enzyme phosphoglucose isomerase. And it's going to isomerize the aldose sugar, glucose 6-phosphate, to the ketose sugar, fructose 6-phosphate. So that means that the aldehyde uh, uh, that exists here at the hemiacetal here, remember it's a kind of a hidden uh, aldehyde, it is a OH and an OR attached to the same carbon. You can see there's two O's on it. One is an OR, each one's an OR. And that's a hemiacetal. Nothing else hanging off, so you know it's an aldose. It has an aldehyde there when it opens up. Um, so it's going to isomerize this to a ketone, and that means we need to put the double bond O into this position, into the, the two position. And that'll give us fructose 6-phosphate. Now this reaction runs uh, pretty much at equilibrium uh, at positive 1.7 kilojoules per mole. All I have to do is slightly change the products to reactance ratio here to make that work. So of course uh, the reason that sugar is cyclized in the first place is to reduce the reactivity uh, and that means that we need to increase the reactivity to get this one to go. And so the way this happens is through side chains of, uh, of phosphoglucose isomerase, glutamate and lysine in the active site that are going to first do a ring opening, um, and then they're going to do the chemistry. So these two amino acids kind of go between basic and acidic, or acidic and basic, rather, uh, for this one, uh, constantly back and forth until we finish the reaction. So these are the only two you really need. The reaction mechanism is pretty easy, just a series of protonations and deprotonations in different spots. So first let's start. We have to open up the reaction. We have to open up our ring, and that's going to start here by pulling the hydrogen at the aldose site at the aldehyde, and our bond electrons are going to come down to make the double bond. Then our bond is going to break and protonate from the lysine to solve the nitrogen's positive charge problem. That's going to serve to open our ring for us, and that's going to mean that we can start to do some real chemistry there. So now you can see that our ring is open, we have an aldehyde back, and our OH that was in the middle of the ring is now just an alcohol. The ring is open, it's still in the same approximate conformation, but our lysine and our glutamate have changed charge states. Now what we want to do is we want to start moving that double bond O over here. And you can't push electrons onto that oxygen because it already has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons around it. It already has an octet. So you need to bring these electrons down and then kind of push electrons onto oxygen to give it a negative charge. And remember, oxygen loves a negative charge and so that's going to be favorable here. And so we need to pull off um, our, uh, pull down this oxygen's lone pairs. But if we do that, we're going to end up breaking octet on carbon. So what we really need to do is we need to pull off a hydrogen first and go through what's called an ene diol intermediate. Ene diol. Now an ene diol is just an alkene, a double bond, that has an oxygen and specifically a hydroxyl group at each end of the double bond, ene diol. Okay, so we're going to form that here. The way we're going to do that is using lysine, which is now deprotonated, to pull off this alpha hydrogen. Remember, alpha hydrogens are very acidic because they can do this sort of thing. They can make a double bond and generate an enolate. In this case, we're going to protonate right away at glutamate to make our ene diol. So Again, we pull off the hydrogen at the alpha position of the sugar. That makes a, that bond electrons go down to make a double bond here. And then we push charge onto oxygen, which then gets protonated here. So you can see our ene diol here. We have a double bond, C double bond C, with two OIHs on either end. We're back to our original charge state. And now we can start to pull hydrogens from the other side. We used to have a double bond O here. Now let's make a double bond O here so we can start to do the isomerization. So the easiest way to do that is to pull this hydrogen, swing our electrons down, and normally what would happen was we would push these onto this carbon. Can't go onto oxygen, again, because it already has an octet. Um, so the best choice we would have is to go on carbon. Now carbon is not electronegative enough to hold an extra electron, and so really what we need to do is pull a hydrogen and protonate immediately, because we just don't have a very stable uh, charge there. So that is going to give us a double bond at this point because we pulled the hydrogen, the bond electrons become double bond O, that makes a ketone, and then we protonate at this part to give us CH2OH. So now we have fructose 6-phosphate. This is the linear form. It is not a closed ring yet. 
And of course, what we want to do is close our ring, and that is also going to help us to recharge our enzyme back to the positive and negative state that we started with. So the last step here in this reaction is for us to close the ring. Now, the easiest way to do that for us is to pull our hydrogen off from our attacking oxygen, the one we used to do the clo ring closure. Bond electrons are going to go down here and attack this oxygen's carbonyl. And then we're going to get protonated from glutamate, and we're going to go onto the oxygen. So now this mechanism is going to be very efficient for us because it's going to close our ring, and it's also going to recharge our enzyme. So we can do another round as soon as we release the fructose 6-phosphate. Again, this works really near equilibrium, and they're easily back and converted back and forth. So here's our fructose 6-phosphate. We can release that guy. And if you just wanted to do this in reverse, you could go back to glucose 6-phosphate. Because remember, the delta G naught is uh, 1.7 kJs per mole. Real easy to undo this. In fact, it's going to be more favorable in the reverse direction, right? Uh, instead of glucose to fructose, it's going to be unfavorable. Fructose to glucose is going to go way easier. Six-membered rings, remember, are more stable than five-membered rings. Now this fructose 6-phosphate can go on and become committed to glycolysis in the next reaction.